Alrighty, so in this video, we are going to be talking about setting up your high converting LinkedIn profile. All right, so setting up your personal LinkedIn profile. So this is to get clients organically. And in order to do that, you're going to need a clean and professional profile on LinkedIn that clearly states what you do and has posts slash content that proves you're committed and credible. Now you're going to be using LinkedIn to search and find prospects in your niche and then adding them as connections and these prospects will investigate your profile before accepting your requests and that's why it's important. So let's take a look and we're going to be diving into all of that um, in the prospecting and showing you how to actually get clients but this is about setting up your foundations on LinkedIn. So architecting a high converting LinkedIn profile. So just like creating your high converting website, I want you to view your LinkedIn profile as a landing page because it is. And I don't want you to make the mistake of only showing your resume like many people do. You want to speak to your ideal client so when they land on your profile, it resonates with their needs, positions you as an authority in your sector, and strikes a nerve so they take action. And you want it to look clean, professional, and present yourself as high value. And your profile is the main pillar which hoists your positioning power. So if you don't have a LinkedIn account, go to LinkedIn.com now and sign up. It's free. All right, so laying the foundation. Without a doubt, laying a solid foundation for all your future LinkedIn efforts leads to success. More specifically, turning your profile into a high converting lead generation personal landing page for your business. Something that really builds your brand and gets you leads on autopilot. So to kick things off, we'll ensure your LinkedIn profile is engaging from the start. So as unsuspecting prospects scroll through their feeds, you're primed to capture their attention and pique their curiosity enough that they'll click through to view your profile. We're going to ensure your photo, headline, and entire profile is fully optimized so that traffic and engagement on your content doesn't go to waste. Now the benefits don't stop there either. Your outbound efforts will benefit tremendously as well. As a result, your connection acceptance rates will spike up, giving you the sales opportunities you've been struggling to get yourself. So the anatomy of a high converting LinkedIn profile. So LinkedIn is a platform for professionals to highlight their resumes and connect with new prospects. Instead of sending out your resume, we can now build a LinkedIn profile that shares that instead. Now, like I said, it's not actually a resume. It's, a, it's more of a sales page. Now, we utilize LinkedIn to build a network through enhancing our first degree connections with our ideal niche prospects and utilize those connections as leads to send outreach emails to. But first, we need to start the process of building out your LinkedIn profile. So what is LinkedIn? So we use LinkedIn to connect ideal prospects, which includes creating a profile, start locating your ideal prospects on LinkedIn, which is in a separate training, and start connecting with ideal prospects. So that is in a separate training. So there is three different degrees of connections. We have first degree connections, second degree connections, and third degree connections. And once you have built a network with LinkedIn, we can start sending out direct LinkedIn emails requesting strategy sessions. So the levels of prospects, we have first degree connections. So first degree connections are included in your network of LinkedIn connections. Now you have access to the email, which we used for sending direct outreach emails to. Okay. Now this is a setting at this point where they can choose to share their email or not. Um, but some do, some don't, but now if they do have that feature, turned on, you'll have access to their email. All right, so as you can see, the way to tell if it is a first degree connection is you, you will see this first icon right here. All right, so second degree connections. This is basically like a friend of a friend. So you are connected with one of your prospects connections and therefore there is a second degree of separation. So this is the level we try to connect with as they are the most likely to accept your request. All right, so you can see the second degree thing here. All right, and the more second degree connections you have with someone, the more, typically the more likely they are to accept. All right, so third degree connections. So this is everyone else. This is like a friend of a friend of a friend. So you are separated three layers from your prospect or you don't have any connections 
whatsoever to this prospect. So this is the level we try not to connect with if we don't have to, as they're less likely to accept. Now, of course, you know, there's still going to be prospects and potential clients that are third degree connections. So the key components of your profile. So we have the profile image, the profile header slash background, your headline, your summary, your niche specific articles, your experience section, any accomplishments and certifications, and then interest skills and other items. All right, so profile image dimensions. All right, so we're going to be covering all these different uh, image sections in a minute, but I'm just going to cover the dimensions here. So LinkedIn profile picture, 400 by 400 pixels. And then LinkedIn background photo size is 1584 by 396. And then LinkedIn post image is 1200 by 1200 for desktop, 1200 by 628 for mobile. And then LinkedIn profile link image dimensions are 638 by 426. And you know, we're if you don't know what that is, we're gonna cover that shortly. All right. So knowing the elements of a profile. So there's really three main elements. We have above the fold directly below the fold and below the fold. So directly below the fold, mid fold. And uh, so here was in the above fold section, we have profile image, cover image, headline services provided. All right. Then we have in the directly below the fold about summary featured links and media. And then below the fold, we have experiences, roles, experience links. All right. So you can see we have about summary, Profile image, cover image, tagline, services provided, experiences and rules, experience links. All right, so we're going to cover all of that stuff. So first is profile photo. So this is mandatory. You must have this. It must look professional, preferably a professional headshot. You want it to look welcoming to new prospects. So if you do not already have a professional headshot, dress up professional, do your hair and makeup, shave for men, have a friend take a photo, shoulders and higher with a plain background, preferably white. And make sure your images does not include blurry image, no additional text slash logo, Okay, so you want a high quality headshot, okay? And here is a few different tips to elevate your profile photo. So profiles that have photos generally receive 21 times more views and 31 times the messages as those who don't select any image. So if you have something up there, even something grainy and old, you're still better off, okay? You're still better doing that. Um, so it is important to get the photo right since this is a social network designed to potentially get you new deals. So here's some quick tips. So make it professional. Make sure it's well lit. This picture is about you. No full body shots and make sure it's crisp and clear. So make sure your photo is professional. If it features you at the bar or wearing a wetsuit fresh off your surfboard, then it's probably not a good idea. Make sure it's not blurry. Low quality picture taking currently makes you seem incompetent and no one likes that. Use some good lighting. So this ensures no harsh shadows of your face, making you seem angrier than you actually are. Make sure the picture is about you. That means no group photos, avatars, or cartoon versions of yourself. It needs to be real, professional, and you. So smile more. So even if you're the serious type, when you don't smile in photos, you come off stiff, uptight, which alienates people. And that's the opposite of our goal here. So a few common mistakes. So when people see your LinkedIn profile, what they really want to see is the head and shoulders. It allows them to see your face clearer and makes you seem more approachable. Uploading anything else in a moderate close up. So that's right. These LinkedIn profile images are only going to be blown up larger when someone is snooping on your profile. Otherwise, you're a tiny circle on a screen, especially on mobile. So unless the photo is taken decently close, you'll be blurry and off in the distance somewhere. Using a super grainy photo. So with high quality cameras being so readily accessible these days, there's no excuse for this. All it does is distract from you, which is the opposite of what you want. And how to tell if your photo is good. So research has shown that we're very bad at perceiving how other people judge photos of us. 
So translation, so whatever you think people perceive from your photo is probably completely wrong. And it's not just you, it's everyone. So ask anyone out and about what they think people are perceiving about them and you'll likely nod, let them finish, and then clue them in. Whatever image of yourself that you consider the best is not the same of what others would pick of you. So in other words, we need to get around our own biases about ourselves. So a few different softwares and tools that we can use that we can you know help leverage is one is photo feeler. So this tool allows us to quickly survey others to figure out what others think about our photo. You know because we can't be trusted to do this ourselves. So think of this tool as a window to the other side. It clues you in so you can put your best face forward. So to get started, go to photofeeler.com and click the get started button in the upper right hand corner. Then sign up for your account. If you sign in with LinkedIn, you can skip all the tedious parts up to you. And then once you're logged in, you will see a few options to upload photos from your computer, Facebook or LinkedIn. Once you've done that, you'll pick a category to be evaluated against either business, social, dating. So for now, let's pick business. We'll be evaluated on competence, likability, and influence. I recommend the standard test or anything higher. You'll get more objective results. To take your test live, you're going to need some credits. That means you have two options. Just buy some credits. They're like 19 bucks for 100. That's all you need to run a standard live test. If you're looking to save some cash, you can earn credits by voting on other people's photos. Click the vote drop down in the top navigation. Select a category, any, and vote. So another tool is called Snapper Photo Analyzer. Now this is an AI software. So to start, go to snapper.com and click Analyze My LinkedIn Photo button. Then log into your LinkedIn account. It will scan your photo using AI and then spit out a report with an aggregate score and some detailed feedback on your face, composition, and editing. Note when it criticizes your face, it will do so based on the photo itself, not your normal daily facial expressions. So pick something where you're not squinting up at the sun or something. Now this tool isn't for people who don't do well with harsh feedback, it's just an AI roasting your face. So clipping magic, so this is basically if you don't have any Photoshop skills and you have uh, a busy background, you can use clipping magic to basically clip out any background um, of your image if you need to, okay? And how to optimize your LinkedIn profile header. So the next thing that we're gonna tackle is the header image and that's basically the big horizontal image above your profile but behind your photo. It's valuable real estate and it's the first thing people see when they click on your profile. Think of it as a chance to stand out. So make sure to test your background image on desktop and mobile device. There's no scrolling involved, it's right above the fold, so visitors don't need to click expand or read anything unless you add text in it, so it's really about conveying something visually. And at 1584 by 396 pixels tall, it's gonna take up a nice chunk of your page. So here's your header, so here's an example, high quality header, it could be you, city skyline, your office, etc. And a few different examples it could be, so event photos. So if you're speaking or if it's a company event, you should be showing off that photo. Any photo of you speaking in front of a crowd instantly visually conveys that you are a thought leader, someone that people can trust and listen to. This is the ideal type of photo to use in your header image if you can. If you haven't spoken in front of a crowd yet, here's a simple hack. Invite some friends and family over to a barbecue in your backyard, set up a podium and hire a photographer to snap some photos. Okay, you can use that at your own risk. All right, group photos. So another option is to use group photos of your team. If they're impressive, feature everyone there so that people can see you're growing a big company. Photos of you leading a team meeting or working with your team also do well because they instantly convey that you're a leader. Custom graphics. So another example you can use is custom graphics with a call to action. These are great if you don't have any good photos of yourself speaking or with it, your team. Graphics help, especially if it encapsulates your service or product. That way you can include a link to your website inviting them to learn more. Social proof. So you can also use your header as social proof. So if you've been featured in different places, you can include that, uh, any testimonials, etc. All right, so headline is next. So this is mandatory. This is basically your five second elevator pitch all bundled up into a few words at the top of your profile. So when you send a connection request, the prospect has a mini view of this headline and therefore you want it to be powerful enough for your prospect to want to accept your connection request. 
We can also use our headline to help encourage psychological visibility from the first instant your prospect interacts with you. Your headline can also have your main skills and keywords related to your work as a professional so that you can be found in the internal searches. And as long as you incorporate your niche and the problem that you think you can help solve, then you have a solid headline. So your headline, it's the most important component, a clear, concise headline showing how you can help your specific niche get their desired result and solve their problem. All right, so the messaging equation. So remember, it all boils down to how much time, money, and emotion you are saving the client. For example, how can you save them money, make them money, save them time, make their company more profitable, less stressful, emotion. So as you can see, the focus is on them, not you. Let's dive into how the messaging equation is crafted. So examples, so I help real estate agents save 10 to 50 K on taxes every single year with little known corporate structures. 80% of agents don't have. I help HVAC CEOs increase profits by 20 to 30% after 60 days of implementing automated jobs, costing across all commercial and residential jobs. I help marketing agencies increase profit margins to 40% by tracking realization by client. I help truckers fight the IRS and pay the bare minimum minimum required by law even if you're receiving letters saying you owe 50k or more all right so your headline so example i help niche to solve problem and get desired result by solution all right so here's a few other examples so the job title headline so here's an example cmo at utopia marketing it's straightforward short and simple only used by those with prestigious positions at a really well-known company ideally and it's combinable with several other formulas so you can build on it if that's your thing major achievement headline so take a look at tony robbins profile he starts off with number one new york times best-selling author a big achievement it's going to interest a lot of people this is a good tactic when you're really well known for a thing for instance stephen king is known for being a prolific author so his headline could be author of 20 plus new york times best-selling novels michael phelps could use u.s olympic swimmer for 28 medals all right, next is the question helper headline. So this is how these questions headlines work. They invite people to learn more. So you might want to start off with things like looking to, looking for fill in blank, question mark, want to accomplish X, question mark, are you tired of, are you tired of this pain point, question mark, do you need to get this thing done, question mark, all right and the contact me headline so kind of similar to the last one this includes your email address or website in the headline itself for example let's say you write something like contact me if you need help growing your home service business you could add a dash and add your email address at the end all right and the executive power formula headline so the executive power formula headline includes several elements of the formulas described above and combines them into a way that positions you as an influencer all right, so it includes several elements from the best headlines we've tested and combine them in a way that positions you as an authority in your sector. So typically the two main headlines we like to use are either the I help niche achieve this result with or without X or the executive power formula or you can kind of combine these. So here's a few examples of the executive power formula. So we help B2B companies scale to seven or eight figures in under 12 months leveraging LinkedIn, executivestride.com forward slash quiz, featured in Yahoo Finance, 100 plus clients. This is keynote speaker, 10X your appointments, uh, calendar and business growth, call to action, featured in this, 100 plus clients, family first, Founder and CEO at blank, creating products that challenge people to rethink the way they live, teacher at heart. So the way you formulate this is as follows. So what you do, so your job title, so CEO at Executive Stride, founder and CEO at Utopian Marketing, CEO at Tesla, co-founder at PayPal, what your personal mission statement and or power solution, so why you do what you do, so 10x your uh, appointments for calendar and business growth, creating products that challenge people to rethink the way they live, empowering financial equality, uh, noteworthy personal achievements is next. So Forbes top 12 innovators, founder, innovative founders, founder at executivestride.com, Forbes 30 under 30, 1,000 plus clients, keynote speaker, Y Combinator, Columbia MBA, whatever the case is, and then personal touch. So this is a trust factor builder. So dad, proud dad, mom, teacher at heart, podcast host, family man, family first. All right, so that is the executive formula. So I typically 
either go with something like that or go with a combination or just go with an I help statement uh, mix with maybe like a job uh, the, the job title of what you are CEO whatever the case is so those are a few headlines and a few more things to note when creating your headline so it's not the end all to why a prospect will or will not accept your connection request it just helps make it easier for your prospect to accept your connection request if they know who you are and what you do so you could keep your headline generic and not include your niche but it's not preferred do some research on your niche inside LinkedIn and get a feel of what your niche is using as keywords in their headlines and then take those words, rearrange the wording, and you got yourself a perfect headline. And always check your spelling and grammar. All right, so next is the summary section. So this is calling out your niche, addressing the problem, agitating the problem, then providing the solution with a CTA. So how to optimize your summary. So time to talk about your summary. So that's the big block of text right below your profile image and headline. The first two sentences shows up on anyone's profile and we didn't make those sentences enticing enough for the prospect to select the see more option. So check your spelling and grammar always. Uh, it's, it's an important section, especially if you're looking to score more clients or network. So ideally what you want to do is share a personal story that highlights how you can help your clients or customers achieve something meaning, meaningful and then invite them to contact you. This section is super Super important and perhaps the hardest to get right ideally you want to share a personal story that highlights how you help your customers get closer to their goals include case studies and testimonials of course and then also right below it's a great way to mention exactly why you're on LinkedIn are you focusing on networking speaking finding a job or finding new customers how can they contact you what's your call to action why should they be reaching out to you Okay, so your summary could include any of the following details, so intriguing description of who you are and what you do, background about why you decided to work with your niche, experiences you had, services you offer, how to contact you, email and phone, quirky details that might attract your niche, saying you speak multiple languages or travel the world, and then any qualifications slash certifications that help with the niche and the featured section so this is important links with images lead magnets testimonials vsls facebook groups opt-ins services etc all right and how to optimize your featured section so if you scroll through my featured links directly below my about section you will realize that i've transformed this section into a super optimized click funnel for executive strides most popular products services and links now these images help me stand out in a huge way compared to 99.99 percent of other linkedin profiles so i highly recommend adding images to your profile links most importantly, they will help you convert visitors into community members, leads, and ultimately new clients, which is the goal of why we're on LinkedIn after all, to grow your business. So if you don't have a call to action or conversion goal in mind, then why are you really driving people to your profile other than vanity metrics? So here's what you can use. You can use this website called Peak Link to edit link previews, okay? Um, this will basically allow you to add different images to a specific link and then put that in your uh, featured section. Now, you could also just, if it's a link on your website, you could change that social link on your website. But now if you don't know how to do that or if you just wanna save time, peak.link is a good way to do that. So. You can check that out. It will be in the description of this video as well. LinkedIn Post Inspector, so custom profile link images software. So here's a quick tip to optimize the featured images on your links. So LinkedIn developed a tool called Post Inspector that lets you see how links will appear in the preview before posting. All right, so go to executivestride.com forward slash post dash inspector and keep testing your custom image and refreshing via Post Inspector to preview the updated links before finalizing and saving your new image link. All right, depending on the landing page or website builder you use, you'll need to update the featured image on the page along with the meta title and description to land at the optimal preview for your link. So you can, like I said, you can optimize this on your website builder or landing page or you can use that, that website that I just uh, mentioned, Peak Link. So this will show up wherever you post it on LinkedIn. So posts, messages, and comments. And this will show up wherever you post that link, really. So at ES, we've determined that the following dimensions work well for designing and optimizing profile images for your profile. Optimized profile image dimensions is 638 by 426. And next is the experience section. So say something that is unique and that will get them to read it. Do not use this as a resume. This is for additional sales copy. Use this real estate strategically. 
and how to optimize your work experience. So now it's time to optimize your experiences. When most people think of LinkedIn, they think of it as their online resume, but this sets them up for failure. They miss out on the massive value potential the platform has to offer, but it's easy to see why there's confusion. The experience section is on everyone's resume and it's used to highlight work experience. Beneath every job description, you probably summarize the responsibilities and takeaways. So it's not so different from this section on LinkedIn. All right, so how to optimize your work experience. So similar to your featured section, you can see how I've hacked my experience section to be more of a bona fide click funnel for our most popular products and services. Now this section will drive more traffic directly to your website, something most people's experience section doesn't do at all. So to do this properly, you have to create a new company page if you don't already have one for each experience that you want to add. Otherwise, it will show multiple jobs nested under your main company, which doesn't have the same effect or drawing the reader down the profile like a conversion optimized landing page. So start off with the obvious, your work experience for the past several years. So stick to your previous five companies. Anything other than this isn't worth it. Plus this usually comes across as fluff, which looks like you're just padding your resume. So don't get all nostalgic and start diving into the clubs that you started in high school. Volunteering experiences also count, especially if it's relevant to your day job. Next, you'll want to showcase experiences. So for this section, be sure to fill out your work experiences, volunteer experience, and education. Beneath each job, include a document, preferably an example of your work if possible, a summary of all your responsibilities and what you took away from that experience. If you've won awards or if you have a few testimonials, show them off. If you've been featured in publications, link to these too. And you can check out the link to my LinkedIn profile if you need some reference, which will be linked below as well. Now, stack up your publications, not only in terms of articles you wrote, but articles that you've been featured in. So lastly, make sure that your top job or experience is the one that you want to be known for. So for example, if you start a new position somewhere, it's probably going to show first. So you want to rearrange it to make sure your most important role is at the very top instead for greater impact. Now, this arranged order is, is going to change how people find you through LinkedIn SEO and also how automation pulls your information, etc. So if you want to be reached out by a specific role you know what to do a side note here is if you're listed as a recent advisor to a bunch of new companies make sure that doesn't push your real job below the fold it also impacts your searches so how to optimize the below the fold sections so education so this is encouraged to add additional content into your experience and knowledge if you put your education and date it's easy for your prospects to guess your age you don't necessarily need to put the dates you graduated you also do not need to put an education on your LinkedIn profile. Most people don't even look at that section, nor does it matter. But if you, you know, if you choose to do, here's how to optimize your education. So here's another thing that goes into the experience section, your education. Bonus points if you went to a large university or a prestigious one. But assuming you didn't, people who went to the same institution might be interested in connecting. Also include a document beneath each one of these if you can. Work samples paired with a summary of responsibilities and your takeaways. It's all in the details, trying to evaluate the information you put out there. If you put your education and date, it's easy for prospects to guess your age. You don't necessarily need to put your dates you graduated. All right, so how to optimize your recommendations. So they're a big deal. They help your profile appear in more searches. So your goal is to get more people to leave you glowing recommendations. The best way to do that is to reconnect with people you've worked with in the past. See if they'd be willing to leave you a recommendation. Actually, the best way to do it is use a swap tactic. Basically, leave other people we've worked with glowing recommendations. After that, say, hey, I hope you liked the recommendation I left on your profile. I would love if you could drop a recommendation on mine too, no pressure, but would mean the world to me. All right? Once you're done tapping that phone, try your current coworkers slash team. Getting recommendations from your peers goes a long way. They interact with you most days of the week. They know what you're doing. They know what you're capable of and what it's like to work with you. If you work in a service-based company, that's even better. It adds a social proof element that you can use as a testimonial anywhere, including on your own website. Whatever you do, make sure it's still on LinkedIn, since that will be where you get most of your targeted traction. Plus, you can always repurpose your LinkedIn recommendations elsewhere, throw them on a website and testimonial section, or in emails for some extra social proof. Also, when someone agrees to give you a recommendation, ask them to focus on a particular experience or project rather than giving a generic account of your skills or character. 
all right and the more concrete the feedback is the more real it comes across you want to make it feel specific and believable all right there's also some different facebook groups where you can post in there and swap different recommendations from different people if that's something that you want to do to get some quick all right so how to optimize your publication so next on the list is publications so these are super important as well and here's why publications matter so they serve as a powerful social proof they help generate added trust for powerful authority positioning and they're straightforward and simple to add so why not now how to optimize your publication so if there's any publications you've been featured in maybe you did a guest post or you got interviewed or you have some press it's worth making a note of it on LinkedIn it doesn't even need to mention you as long as it's a noteworthy article that mentions your company it's all about that social proof so it doesn't matter if someone else wrote it or if you collaborated on it this helps you get more reach and add more credibility to the publication list. Next is accomplishments. So you want to try to encourage and add color to your experiences through certifications and other accomplishments that you have had. You could also include publications you've already been in, articles you have written, or anything else you want your prospects to be viewing. Example, education-based training video, etc. Interest, skills, volunteer experience, pulse, articles, etc. So this is optional but encouraged. It helps your prospects decide to accept your connection request if you are in a similar LinkedIn group, have volunteer experience, and they know the skills you possess. You can also have clients post recommendations for you if possible. Therefore, try to join at least five LinkedIn groups relevant to your niche market, including any volunteer experience you have or other skills you may want to include slash allow to endorse. And key things to remember, so you are required to include the following on your LinkedIn profile. Professional profile picture, headshot, background image, headlines, summary description, job experience. The purpose of having a LinkedIn profile is to showcase who you are to your prospects. We want them to know you are a real person and someone they will be able to accept the connection invite with. Always check for grammar and spelling throughout your profile. Get creative with your headline slash messaging. Remember that the goal is to get the prospect to accept your connection requests. Try to fill out as many items on your profile as possible. Remove notifications to your market when making changes to your profile. And how to customize your profile URL. So next we'll customize your profile URL. Here's why it's important to make your profile URL unique. Branded URLs are much easier to remember. They don't look messy when you share them with people. They reinforce your name in people's memory. They make you look more legit. The thing about this next step and the reason why so many people miss it is that it's harder to find than it should be. So here's what to do. Load LinkedIn.com, navigate to your profile, click your name in the profile box on the upper left hand side, then click the link that reads edit public profile and URL in the upper right side of your profile page. So basically go to your profile page, then click edit profile and URL. And then when that page loads, hit the blue pencil icon next to your current URL in the edit your custom URL panel in the upper right hand side, and then type in your desired URL. This is one of those situations where keeping it simple is the better way to go. My suggestion is just use your name. So for instance, my LinkedIn profile URL is linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash Josh Pocock 13, just because Josh Pocock's not available and it's done well for me. Turn off your people also viewed section. So turn off your people also viewed section. Most profiles have this turned on, mostly because people don't realize they can turn it off. This little trick is simple and it only takes a second to do. Just go to settings and privacy and then go to privacy. Here it will say how others see your profile and network information. Just scroll down and you'll see the setting viewers of this profile also viewed. Click here and a toggle switch will appear allowing you to turn off this feature. The people also viewed section is most likely filled with your competitors or the previous companies that you worked at, which could easily make you lose potential leads. Having this feature turned off will prevent people from clicking away from your profile and helps prevent leads from being stolen away from you. Also make follow your default actions. So are you coming up on the 30,000 LinkedIn connection limit or are you looking to position yourself as an expert? One quick and easy change you can make is to change your default action button on your profile from connect to follow. 
So make follow your default actions. So this is also great if you're posting a lot of content on LinkedIn and looking to grow your follower base without clogging up your inbox quite as bad. So to make that change, just go to executivestride.com forward slash allow dash follow and click the toggle button to yes below where it says make follow primary. If enabled, follow will become your primary action when members view your profile. All right, next is LinkedIn profile SEO optimization. So do you want people to easily be able to find you on LinkedIn and contact you about your business? And just like SEO on Google, you need to optimize your LinkedIn profile with keywords that people usually use to find something. But Google keywords and LinkedIn keywords might be different. So there is no need to open SEM Rush or AREFs to find a list of words and their search difficulty and volume. So step one is find keywords on LinkedIn. So there is no tool for LinkedIn SEO. So we'll need to go to LinkedIn basic search and search for different keywords and see their volume. So when you search for a keyword on LinkedIn, it will show you how much uh, volume there is, whether there's a million for that million results for that keyword, etc. Now type in the keywords in the search bar and then choose people. So make sure you search, uh, basically go to your, uh, let me just show you. So if I go to my search, I go to search and I search for lead generation. And then I am going to click on people right here. And I can see that there are 2.8 million results. Okay. So that is how you do it. And then now we can see the total number of search results. So when you test five to six different keywords, you will have a clear understanding of an SEO situation. You can also look at competitors and see what different or competitors or people in your niche and see what keywords they're using. Now you can choose one of two keywords you'll focus on. Notice that the bigger search volume keywords have, the harder it will be for you to rank there. So second is add SEO keywords to your LinkedIn profile. So now when you understand what the better keywords for your LinkedIn profile are, you can add them to one, your headline, your summary, your experience section, your skills, and title, summary, and headline make the biggest impact on your SEO. All right, so LinkedIn profile extraneous bonus section. So there are many other sections that are a little less important. So honor awards, organization, projects, languages, certifications, I usually add those, uh, and then courses. Now these, they really don't affect, you know, the overall results of your, your LinkedIn profile since they're so close to the bottom and they, they won't affect SEO in any way typically. Um, so final thoughts on LinkedIn profile optimization. So wrapping up this lesson, here are some final thoughts. So think of your LinkedIn profile as your own personal landing page. This is where you want people to end up. When people see your activity, see the content you're producing for the platform, the messages and connection requests you're sending out, they'll get interested. All right, so here is a cheat sheet available in the download section of this video called Architecting a High Converting LinkedIn Profile Cheat Sheet. All right, so how to craft a high converting LinkedIn profile that attracts prospective clients in your niche. So when it comes to crafting your LinkedIn profile, from head to toe, it must be niche specific and tailored specifically to the ideal client that you like to work with. This is crucial for getting LinkedIn to work exceptionally well as 70 to 80% of people will view your profile either before or after you connect with them. You want it to spark their curiosity and put them in an agitated situation seeking you as the expert to solve their pain slash problem slash desire slash aspirations, etc. So here's a few notes, okay? So your LinkedIn profile functions like a landing slash sales page. Most of your content that is on your website can be added to both your LinkedIn profile personal and your business profile, which we're gonna cover in a later video. Prospects will engage with your message via an article, a referral, an outbound message or an ad and immediately jump to your social profiles for validation of what you are claiming is true. Your headline of your LinkedIn profile similar to your website headline needs to call out the audience and specific problem you are solving. You can also just put CEO and founder. Your background image needs to be aesthetically pleasing. It should stand out among other profiles in your niche. Your description is a mini sales letter. It calls out the audience, the problem you are solving, introduces your solution, displays credibility, some features if you can, social proof, case studies, and presents a call to action. 
Remember this is a landing page on your LinkedIn. You want to use media in your description and your own profile in as many instances as possible. So YouTube videos, native videos, content on your profile. Remember this is a landing page. You want to publish a few articles on your LinkedIn page. If you have them, get your team members to publish them to their profiles as well. For your experience, add the sales letter and assets to your current position. Remember, every word you write on your LinkedIn profile should be doing work. You can also put case studies as experience with testimonials and videos. Use as much video as you can. Try to add at least one to two videos or media objects for each experience. Be careful not to add yourself as an employee to your case study. Your customers might message you about that. And add your education. This is obvious. Add your customers and network for recommendations. These are basically testimonials. Super important. If you don't have a large network, so below 200 connections on LinkedIn, spend some time to connect with folks on your LinkedIn and get to at least 500. For example, of a LinkedIn profile for your reference, you can check out mine here. All right, and refer to the training video for a more in-depth visual walkthrough so you can rewatch this training again. And so here are the instructions. So first is add a high quality headshot to add your profile image. Make sure the profile has a clear photo of you in it where you can see your face. This is important for people to put a face to your name and know and like you. Uh, second is add a high quality image as a background image. So this can be, you know, your city, your office, custom photoshopped image with awards, etc. Add your I help niche to solve problem and get result by proprietary method statement to your headline section of your profile at the top. You can also use any of the other headlines we talked about. Four, in the summary section, add your persuasive copy to explain what your prospect may be slash currently going through. Then start to outline your solution at a high level of how you can potentially help them to get their desired situation. Use the example above to model. Five, add any links or media videos slash images you want the prospect to see. You want to keep it super simple. Just add an image with a link to your calendar to book a call. Six, add a few articles, one to three at least, to show you're active in their world, your niche. If you have some already, great. If you don't, start to upload a couple. And we did already cover how to create blog articles. Now seven, in the experience tab, make a company profile. If you don't already have one, you can go follow these instructions here, okay? Then add your title slash role and your I help blank to blank by blank statement. For the description, you can also follow this outline structure here. So what we do, elaborate on I help statement, how we do it, your proprietary method, what makes us different, so points of differences, elaborate on your method and benefits slash key differences, learn more, link to your calendar, and see example here. And then eight, add some links slash media as well to your company profile in the experience section, add your link to your calendar and your video sales machine. All right, you can also use the business foundations worksheet basically to use the information you filled out here to plug and play into your uh, to your LinkedIn profile and to craft a different uh, copy and whatnot, um, as well as different stuff from your blogs and your VSL. Um, but also you can go to the competition tab here and this is a good place where you can do market research and research your competition's LinkedIn profiles. So you can put their name, their company name, their website, their LinkedIn company profile link, their company page description, their LinkedIn profile link, their headline for LinkedIn, their summary, their company description uh, in their uh, experience section and that they sent you any messages because some people times you're going to get people messaging you in your uh, niche or in your competition on LinkedIn you can copy those like the connection request the message one two three four and paste them in here so you can spy on your competitors and then you can also check out their their opt-in so you can check out their opt-in page their VSL page or their sales page their opt-in headline their opt-in description their booking page their quiz page if they have one all right not everyone's gonna have all this stuff but then you can accumulate a database of different people either in your niche or in, as your competition and you can look at their LinkedIn profile look at their different resources and you can take you know the top stuff from in the industry and just make it better so that is another uh, strategy that we use and uh, that you can use and then here is the LinkedIn profile optimization cheat sheet which is available as well in the download section of this video alright so it is pretty basic uh, just you know making sure you have a professional profile picture attention grabbing banner captivating headline composing your sales letter 
get 500 plus connections, get endorsements, get recommendations, and then set up a custom URL. All right. So other than that, that is a full overview. Like this is a full overview on LinkedIn profile optimization. This is an in-depth video. Okay. There's not too many. There's really no one going this in depth on optimizing your LinkedIn profile. So make sure to take the time and do this. If you do 50, if you probably even less than 50, if you do like 50% or uh, you're, you're 90, you're 90 percent uh, ahead of, you know, most of the competition, you're ahead of 90 percent of the competition. Um, but, you know, do the work, actually implement everything from this training. It's a process. You don't need it to be 100 percent perfect right from the get go before we go and start prospecting. But take some time, optimize your profile, do some research. OK, spend some time actually doing this, doing this work um, because it will pay dividends. LinkedIn is such a powerful platform to land clients. You know, we bootstrap some of our companies just using LinkedIn alone, organic without paid ads. So uh, the LinkedIn strategies we talk about in this training are going to be very, very advanced. And, um, and I'm excited to dive into them with you. People are going to check out your LinkedIn profile, regardless of whether they come through an ad or come through a cold call, they're going to check you out and make sure you're legit. So make sure your profile is optimized correctly. Okay, whether you're doing prospecting on your account or your team's account, make sure you have an account that's optimized correctly. So that is this video for optimizing your profile and making sure it is high converting. Do the work and I will see you in the next video.